Okay, welcome back everyone. Uh, we're going to jump right back into the Python uh, RE regular expressions module. And in this video, I'm going to be showing you at least the interesting functionality of the question mark. And I've got the documentation open right over here. I've been looking through the regular expressions kind of patterns and special characters to teach you. And, you know, the question mark uh, naturally comes next in our order of stuff. And it's interesting because the question mark will cause the remaining regular expression to match zero or one repetitions of the preceding regular expression. So the pattern AB question mark will match either A or B. It's sort of like saying that the previous the previous thing that you, the previous thing that you match in your regular expression is optional. <laughs> like it doesn't have to be part of it. So let's let's set this up. If I wanted to use the string a, let's look let's look for all of the a's in our in our pattern. And if I were to run this, it looks like we get a and a and a and and you know our our find all function finds all of them. We found three matches. And now what if I added a c? So we've got in we've got the backslash. We've got the word in the backslash. The, the AC right there is found. Obviously, they don't find the A in, in over there and the other A. But what if we added that question mark? The C is optional. We do find A, and we do find A, and we still find AC because we've made that C optional. What more can we do with this? Can we say E? Let's look for a joke and in. Uh, let's say there's a period or anything can come after it. It can be either the comma or the n. And hmm, can we have an n after it? Yeah, okay, we can have that one. But let's say, let's say the n is optional. So we still get the e with the comma. And we get the e and n. Huh. You guys see what's happening? The question mark makes the last thing that you you, you denote to be optional. Now this can be anything. This can be the backslash W, it can be a backslash D, it can be a backslash S, it can be it can be a, a letter a letter P. It can be anything, you know? <laughs> so that's the joy of the question mark. And we when we get to more of the stuff of this, we can keep reading the documentation. The next option, the uh, asterisk, the plus sign, and the question mark qualifiers are all greedy. So this is kind of going to clarify what I had mentioned earlier in, other, in another video. I, I suppose I was wrong, which does happen more often than not. You, you should not be listening to me. I should not be trying to teach you how to use this module in regular expressions. I don't really know what I'm talking about. <laughs> they, uh, these qualifiers are greedy. I'm just kidding, guys. Sometimes I make mistakes. Don't hate me, please. <laughs> These qualifiers are greedy. <laughs> they match as much of the text as possible. Look, uh, I just don't know. Sometimes this behavior isn't desired. If the regular expression, you know, uh, block words, or at least waka waka, anything in between there is matched against H1, title H1, it will match the entire string and not just H1. And that's not really what we want. Adding the question mark after the qualifier makes it perform the match in a non-greedy or minimal fashion. As few characters as possible will be matched. Using only the dot uh, asterisk and, quote, and question mark in the previous expression will match only h1. Let's do that experiment. How about that? Let's say h1 title and h1. So we get a little bit of HTML in here. If I use the dot asterisk, I will retain all of that. If I use the dot plus, I'll get all of that. And I do I do want to be within less than and greater than symbols here. And the, the functionality still works. Now if I add the question mark here, now I get the header tags. Nice. Is that what I want? Let's check it out what it Yes. It will match the entire string and not just the H1. We do just want the header tag. And when we use the question mark, it works in a lazy fashion or a non-greedy or minimal fashion. Awesome. So that's what it can do. Now, let's get into ranges. This is kind of a one that I'll be looking at. 
at least I, I could show you this now and I could show you later, but since there is a segment for the question mark, I'll show you it. I will show it to you. Yeah. Let's put our old string right back here. Um, let's say... Aardvark... Um, Mississippi... I don't even know how to spell Mississippi in all honesty. <laughs> let's see... Um, loose... Long word... Long words. Alright, I just extended that with lots of stuff. I'm sure you can guess that the range, or by using the, the curly brackets and the braces here, those will specify that anything in the brace, uh, the inside the brace would be a number. And exactly that number of copies of the previous regular expression should be matched. Anything less than that will not be matched. So, A6 will find exactly six characters of A, but not five. So if we were to use A2 Let me fix that. We'll find the two A's for aardvark. If I used S, we'll find those two. If I used O, we find loose, and we find pieces of LOO, LOO. And actually, the match highlighter is acting up again. This should be L O O O, and then the other O's. See, we have four. In this case, it only displays three, but that O should be considered in the match highlighter. Pay no mind to that. If we use O3, we get these O's, and we still get these O's. The find all finds it, but our match highlighter is bugging out. O4, we get O's. Sorry, I didn't run the program. We get just those O's in the long words. Now this can be anything. W. It can be any word character. Find a minimum of four letters. Or even numbers. Remember that W finds others. And of course, in the range, you saw there was another option. It can find any ranges from N to N of the preceding regular expression. It will try to find as many as possible, though. So if we said O, oh, one, two, four, it's going to find all four in the long word. It found all those four, and it's still going to find try and find some of the others. It found the two O's for loose. It found the four O's for long word. Keep in mind it's finding two, not just one here, and it's finding the other O in words. Now, if we were to supply the question mark, this makes this lazy, so it'll only find one every time that it can. See? O, 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 O. And all of these occurrences are 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10. So that is the glory of the question mark. <laughs> uh, I, don't, I haven't seen any more with it yet, so I'm not going to expand on that just yet. But that's what I wanted to show you in this tutorial. The question mark can kind of make things optional or turn lots of multiple occurrence grabbers into lazy strings or non-greedy pattern matching stuff. Very minimal in, in what they find. Okay, uh, I think that's enough talking and blabbering for this video. I hope you enjoyed this, and I will see you in the next tutorial.